have people within Israel who are coming out of the church system, but really did they even come out of the church system at all? 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 You got to leave that thing all the way alone, all the way alone, all the way alone, all the way alone. Why do we as Israel need to go to other nations for um, verification on who we are? Why do we need to go to them? We don't need to go to them for anything. The first thing I want you to look at is, um, now this is a book, one of the books I have is called The Sephardic Atlantic, Colonial Histories and Post-Colonial Perspectives. And I wanna look at a, a couple of pages in here. Why do we need to go to them? We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. We do not need to go, based on the historical account that we went through in this broadcast this evening, we have no reason at all to go to these people for anything. But, but, however, this language thing as it relates to these pews does have a way of hooking us back to the people who do understand that language. Why do we need to go to them? We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. How did we get to this point with Issachar, AKA Dwayne? What made him suddenly decide to mention my name along with others in an attempt to do what I call nice nasty? Family, I have seen this playbook play out a number of times. This particular playbook is designed to create discourse, division, and opportunity. It encourages the creation of one-sided videos to raise questions about another person's work and disguise it as if the instigator truly has concerns for the welfare of the people, when actually the goal of the instigator is to destroy the other person's reputation for personal gain. So why? Why would Issachar, aka Dwayne, make an attempt to stir up discussions about the pews and Savannah, Georgia, six months after the height of the discussion? I can say emphatically, jealousy and envy. He made attempts to mask his jealousy with a war cry of, we don't need validation from other communities. Remove the offering buckets. And of course, the usage of the bywords, Christian Israelites, to stir up those who are suffering from itching ears. He revealed the source of his jealousy and envy in one of his latest videos. It is because he was not part of the Reclaiming the Throne project produced by Moray Joshua and Moray Morris of Hebrew Nation. I am very disappointed at Dwayne because I actually thought he was a person of integrity. See, at the height of the Dow situation I dealt with, he publicly made it clear that I had every right to defend my family. Now, a year and a half later, he decides to make a couple of distasteful videos about me and others within the community. I and others have not made a single video about this individual, and yet he attempts to stir up the pot again with foolishness. As I mentioned, this playbook isn't new. In fact, we see this playbook in the book of Nehemiah. Let me explain. While serving in the palace of Susa, Nehemiah was visited by his brother and a number of other men who had just made a trip to Judah. With keen interest, Nehemiah questioned them about the Israelite captives who had returned to Jerusalem from exile. In response to Nehemiah's question, the men painted a dark, dismal picture of the returned exiles. They were in deep trouble, in severe distress, and were bearing terrible afflictions. They were being reproached and disgraced by the surrounding people and nations. In addition, the wall of Jerusalem, which represents the heart of Israel, had been torn down and the gates had been burned. 
They were suffering an economic depression due to famine. A large number of people were suffering oppression due to the greed of certain wealthy farmers and businessmen. In order to buy food, some of the people had to mortgage their homes and fields. The people were suffering persecution in the form of anti-Semitism, ridicule, and harassment from their neighbors and other nationalities who surrounded them. The people were defenseless against enemy attacks since the wall of Jerusalem had been torn down and its gates burned with fire. Day after day, Nehemiah knocked at the door of heaven, seeking the face of the Most High on behalf of the Israelites who had returned to Judah. His first objective and challenge were how to remind the people of Israel of who they are and their purpose, how to get them together and focus on a common cause, which is to fortify Jerusalem by rebuilding the wall. Once Nehemiah achieved his initial objective, objective in coming up with a plan, he began to initiate. He reminded the Israelites of who they are and what they are called to do as a people. They had to rebuild Jerusalem and also, of course, the house or bayah of worship. They had to rebuild the gates, Dalaf, of the city. The Hebrew letter Dalaf, which is pronounced Daleth in the Israeli language, is a very important letter in understanding why Nehemiah had a sense of urgency to hang them. The numerical value of this letter is four. This letter means door, gate, lid. I highlighted the letter so you can have a visual and understand the proper application of it. The Hebrew and Chaldean lexicon confirms the meaning of this letter. It says, the leaf of a door, so-called from its hanging and swinging. It goes on to say, hence the door itself as hanging on its hinges. See, the Israelites came together as one body, but broken into groups and assigned specific tasks. The people were divided into two groups, one half standing guard while the other half worked. The officers themselves stood guard behind the workers where they could protect and warn them of any impeding attacks. The people stood ready for battle every moment of every day and night. See, they never took off their clothes nor set their weapons aside, even when going for water. The workers took their weapons with them. See, the key in bringing all the people together is reminding them of the importance of their lifeline. See, a lifeline is a thing which someone or something depends or which provides a means of escape from a difficult situation. It is also a rope or line used for life saving, typically one thrown to rescue someone in difficulties in water or one used by sailors to secure themselves to a boat. The Hebrew word for hope is thakwawa, or in the Israeli language is pronounced tikba, which means a cord. It also means expectancy or expectation. I want to turn your attention to another letter. This letter is called the Zayan, which is pronounced Zayin in the Israeli language. This letter means weapon. And so I want to share some shocking information to you all about how the Jewish community, as we know them, turned this letter, this weapon, into a slang, a byword. I want to turn your attention to this book, 10,000 Lovers, written by Edith Reveal. It says, through a mysterious semantic process, the word Zayin, which which means weaponry and which is also the name of the seventh letter of the alphabet came to mean a male reproductive organ in modern Hebrew. Maybe it was inevitable the somewhat phallic shape of the letter Zayin, the somewhat phallic shape of the weapons, the association of the arms in general with sexual gear, the influence of the verb Zion, which means to feed or provide substance, and the alliterative link of Zion with the entirely unrelated biblical word Zona, which means prostitute. So again, all the people bore weapons while working on the wall. Those who carried materials carried their weapons with them and those who were involved in actually building the wall had swords to gird their side. I want to reiterate 
The people stood ready for battle every moment of every day and night. They never took their clothes off nor set their weapons aside. Even when going for water, the workers took his weapon with him. The last letter I want to touch on is the Ka. And the Israeli language is pronounced Ket. This letter means wall, divide. So of course, with every good work comes the crafty council led by Sambalot. Nehemiah chapter six, verse one through three says, now it came to pass when Sambalot and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates that Sambalot and Geshem sent unto me, saying, come, let us meet together together in some one of the villages in the plains of Ono, but they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work. Let me say that again. I am doing a great work. Let me say it one more time. I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? whilst I leave it and come down to you. The first scheme used against Nehemiah was the temptation to compromise, to lead him to cooperate with the crafty council. This is a scheme often used by Hasatan and the enemies of Yahweh's people. If any one of his people can be led to compromise and cooperate with the crafty council and their agenda, then the testimony is soon discredited. Despite all the opposition, Nehemiah and the returned Israelites had accomplished an impossible feat. They had completely finished the wall. Only the gates remained to be hung. But as soon as the wall was completed, the news was immediately carried by some of the spies to the leaders of the crafty council and other groups had stood against the resettlement and rebuilding project. These leaders were Sambalot, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the remaining enemies who had formed an alliance, in other words, a covenant, a constitution, a confederate against Nehemiah and all of Judah. But Nehemiah saw through their scheme, sensing that they were seeking to get him alone in order to kill him. So to protect himself, Nehemiah devised a reply that would either prove their sincerity or else exposed their deception. He simply stated that he could not leave the work unsupervised because the project was at a critical state. It was just too important for him to leave at that time. Unfortunately, this crafty council continued with their deceptive attacks. They decided to take the same approach we see Issachar and the rest of the modern day crafty council took. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 5 through 7 says this, Then sent Sambalot his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand wherein was written it is reported among the heathen and Geshmu said it that thou and the Israelites think to rebel for which cause thou buildest the wall that thou mayest be their king according to these words and thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. And so for the fifth time, they sent a letter to Nehemiah, but this time they changed the contents of the letter and they sent the letter unsealed. Sending a letter unsealed in that day and time was most unusual. In this modern era, this open letter is equivalent to public videos. In ancient days, when an official letter was sent, it was always rolled up, tied, and sealed so it would only be opened and read by the person to whom it was being sent. But in this case, Sambalot Ishakar sent an unsealed letter to Nehemiah. Obviously, his purpose was to have the letter read by the nosy messenger and
and many other nosy people along the route. And these nosy people with itching ears would be the ones who would spread the lies and rumors within it. They would naturally spread the lies contained in the letter and pressure Nehemiah to justify himself. Family, this is another confirmation that we are the people of the book. Likewise, as I've stated, this is the playbook of Issachar and the modern day crafty council. Now notice how the prophet Nehemiah responded. Verse 8 says, Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. Nehemiah carefully thought through the best way to respond to the malicious lies and rumors. One fact stood out above all the others. The slander was totally false. There was no truth whatsoever to the charges. Nehemiah concluded that the best response was threefold. Number one, to forcibly deny the slander and lies. Number two, to boldly charge the enemy with lying and deception. Number three, to pray for strength. See, Nehemiah knew that the opponents were using intimidation to weaken his and his workers' hands in order to stop the construction project. Nehemiah simply turned to the Most High and asked him to strengthen their hands and how to handle this crafty council's attempt to intimidate him and others. 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 The first thing I want you to look at is, um, now this is a book, one of the books I have is called The Sephardic Atlantic, Colonial Histories and Post-Colonial Perspectives. And I want to look at a, a couple of pages in here. Why do we need to go to them? We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. We don't need to go to them for anything. As you can see, every word that has come out of Issachar's, aka Dwayne's mouth, is a contradiction. He says, we don't need their validation. And yet, he used their sources in an attempt to undermine the works of his own brothers and sisters. For example, his source titled, The Sephardic Atlantic Colonial Histories and Post-Colonial Perspectives by Sina Rosenbach and Jonathan Schorsch. Here's a little information about the authors of this book. As you can see, Professor Dr. Sina Rosenbach, her information is displayed on the screen. And likewise, Jonathan Schorsch, his information is displayed on the screen. And as you can see, he is a professor of Jewish religious and intellectual history. Another source Issachar misused was the book titled Library of Political Secrets by Itzvan Bakoni. As you can see, he doesn't appear to be from our community as well. But yet, Issachar conveniently used this reference to go against his own brothers and sisters but it didn't stop there he made an attempt to deceptively use this source against his own hebrew brothers and sisters who made it clear that they are descendants of israel but practicing christianity they never identified themselves as jews nor did they refer to themselves as jewish which means they did not establish a jewish place of worship they founded the first african baptist church in savannah georgia 1773 over one century before the so-called jewish congregation of supposed color people which was founded in 1889 in the historical handbook history of the first African Baptist Church, written by R. E. K. Love, Doctor of Divinity. We see the reoccurring phrase, Father in Israel, or in Israel. We first see the phrase used to describe the character of Reverend Andrew C. Marshall, who was referred to as a venerable father in Israel. It says, the venerable father in Israel, Andrew C. Marshall, died in Richmond, Virginia, December 7, 1856, while returning from the north to the people of his charge. On page 183, we see that 
Deacon Willis Harris is referred to as someone who caused troubles and heartaches in Israel. It says he was arrested found guilty and sentenced to seven years in the penitentiary at hard labor, where he is still. This was a righteous retribution for the troubles and heartaches he caused in Israel. The frowns of Almighty God seem to have rested upon the man. See, the founder and first pastor, Reverend Andrew Bryan, was referred to as a father in Israel within this Israelite assembly. On page 203, it says, when he was commanded not to preach the gospel, he raised his dusky hand, stained in his own blood, drawn by his vile persecutors and said with a trembling voice, with that manly heroism and Christian courage that the grace of God alone can fan into burning eloquence. If you would stop me from preaching, cut off my head. This humble statement from our father in Israel amazed and ashamed his ungodly persecutors. This humble slave, using the weapon of warfare, which is not carnal, but mighty through God, conquered these human brutes and through Christ won a signal victory for the church. Our fathers planted the banner of the Lord here in sweat, tears, and blood around which their children have rallied for 100 years. Anyone who calls yourself using the phrase Christian Israelite as a byword should be ashamed of yourselves. You guys, including Issachar, have no clue about your history. You guys are spitting on your own ancestors' graves. Yet you guys have the audacity to refer to me as emotional or in my feelings. I'm going to address those labels shortly as I continue to explain the tactics of the crafty council. See, this Israelite congregation, who was not ashamed to call themselves Christians, displayed far more courage than many of you. They were true Israelite leaders who blazed the trail for us and yet you armchair after the fact prophets never led an actual physical assembly self-professed leaders who hide behind YouTube channels would rather side with the very people operating in the same spirit of those who beat the founder of this Israelite assembly. Nevertheless, I encourage you Issachar, practice what you preach. Start with reading this source by your own people. I want to show you another deceptive thing. Issachar exposed his own people too, which is a very deceptive community whom he made it clear that he is now connected to. 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 So the brief clip I want to look at begins at the 58 minute and uh, 15 second mark of the video. Now, as you listen to this short clip, listen closely to what he says about how the markings were described in the past. As I stated earlier, there's a church in Savannah, Georgia, on the second floor, where all of its pews has this, what they, what, what, in the 70s, they used to call it African scribble script. Now they call it Arabic script or jam script. <laughs> Now listen to the entire clip of the interview Bishop William Brown did with Amir Muhammad. Amir Muhammad. Amir Muhammad. Amir Muhammad. As I stated earlier, there's a church in Savannah, Georgia, on the second floor, where all of its pews has this. What they, what, when uh, in the seventies they used to call it African scribble scrap. Now they call it Arabic script or jam so, script. Yeah, let, let me let me talk about because I I had um. I had uh, Professor Yosef on here, who is a Arabic scholar uh, in the in the language. Uh, he's very familiar with the Jami uh, and different other uh, scripts. Um, and he's from Morocco. And I had him on, and I was talking to him about that. Um, and looked at because it's 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 a very big uh, type of conversation. Um, and there's about fifty images. Um, of different writings on the pews um, there. And so the images uh, that are there, there's only one of them that has a familiarity um, that would look like a the script uh, within an Arabic script or, uh, or whatnot. And so I was talking to him about it. I was asking him, was it a Jami 
um, was it? Because that's what I was. I, I heard that it was a Jami and it was a, a form of ancient Arabic uh, and whatnot. And he looked at it and viewed it, and he said that the calligraphy in which it is written in reminds you of Arabic, but he couldn't find it. He couldn't agree that it was the script of it. He could. It wasn't a Jami or any Arabic script itself, but it had a familiarity because he. I showed him a image of a calligraphy within Morocco where he's from and he said yes that's Arabic he agreed that was Arabic but when he looked at uh that one particular pew because I think it's one particular pew he looked at uh he said that it has the Arabic script which means it looks like Arabic but it's not written in the language yeah, of yeah. Arabic yeah now that that is what they call a jam like 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 right. if you go look at if you go look at Omar's work Okay, mm -hmm. Omar's work is is seen they use Arabic in it. He also used African words. They use their own language, you right. know, or Ebonics, as we might say. Today. Okay, okay. Uh, um, and, and so this is what they call a, a jammy script. Look at it as well, and there seem to be some type of similarities in conclusion. And but but you threw out something that was that was that was something that I think is is interesting to look at, and how you said that. These are pre-Arabic writings, meaning like they had, uh, I guess, a mixture of some form of African and Jewish writing that of their yeah, own language. I, yeah, yeah, man, come on. It, it, so, it, wait, wait, it, so, hold on, hold on, it, hold on. Arabic was involved and, uh -huh. and Hebrews was involved and they used the script as language, not only, you know, oral, but they used script. Come on, man, it had to come down and influence us some way, some way. So, so they, so they had their own language that basically nobody would understand but them if they're having some form of communication of trying to get away from the white man. If this place is being used as a place uh, for housing runaway slaves, they would have a dialect or communication that they would basically take and say, okay, we only know this language. So nobody else will really be able to interpret it. But we do know that there's some form of African and Jewish uh, type of uh, collaboration to that is that that that's what you're saying, brother Bob? Have you sitting up here giving us some 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 uh, some uh, what they call it? Uh, uh, what's the name? I'm, I'm trying to come up with a name, the name, the term that they call it. Uh, some exclusive information. No, brother, no, 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 no. I'm just sharing information. All right, <laughs> I'm just sharing and open the doors up for the people need to go explore, 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 explore. Did this individual, did he actually um, reach out to you, reach out to you, reach out to you? He said no. He said no. He never, no, I, I never talked to him. I've listened to him for a long time, but I've never spoken to him. I was like, really? I was like, really? I was like, really? I said, wow, that's something. I said, he never called you? He was like, no. And so that to me was very unfortunate. 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 I want to begin this section with the thought. If you can't beat them, join them. With this thought in mind, I want to further expose the spirit of Issachar, AKA Dwayne. This guy, Issachar, is one of the worst of the worst. He is truly a wolf in sheep's clothing and would do anything to build up his platform. This is why I am going to take my time as I address a number of questionable behaviors and poor teachings. For those who have inboxed me and posted comments asking me to make peace with this deceptive person, that's not my responsibility. He decided to stir up the pot. Now he is going to have to eat the soup. For those who insist that I am obligated to pray for him, those who have constantly reminded me that the Messiah says, pray for your enemies. On that note, here is my prayer for this deceiver who led so many of the Most High's people into Catholicism and other deceptions in which I will show you shortly. I am going to use the same prayer King David used for his enemies and he also used it for his own son. As Issachar made it clear, I am not his brother. 
and the rules doesn't apply to him to make peace with me and others whom he publicly disrespected. So here's my prayer. This is coming from the 55th book of Psalms, starting at verse 9. Destroy, O Yahweh, divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. The Most High shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no change, therefore they fear not the Most High. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burdens upon Yahweh, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O Most High, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. See, I want to show you another chapter in the playbook Issachar, a.k.a. Dwayne, used. I want you to listen closely and keep count of the things he has said about me in which I am going to allow you to hear the source. Let's start with the so-called byword among the so-called awakened Hebrews, the label Christian Hebrew or Israelite Christian or Christian Israelite. Where did he get that from? And this is the problem that we're having um, in this faith right here uh, of, of being Israel, is that we've got people brand new converted over from Christianity and are bringing the pagan waves of Christianity over into the faith. These people are pagan, masquerading Hebrew Israelites Christians. That's what they are. Now let's look at the next comparison. He says that I am emotional, I am broken, and rely on women. We have a pastor who could not take someone simply disagreeing. It's, it's, it wasn't about the facts. It wasn't about the evidence. It was simply about disagreement. And because of the disagreement, again, we're going to just chronicle a little bit of what I saw. His first reaction was to basically to immediately take to social media, which is fine. It's totally fine. But I've noticed a pattern with this individual. Anytime someone says something that, uh, that, that they disagree with him, he has a tendency of always running to women. In Issachar's own words, as he makes an attempt to throw a rock into a pack of dogs to see if it hits one or throw everything he can at the wall and see if any of his deceptions stick, he says, I am emotional. He says that I am broken and rely on women. Just those comments alone, I can completely pick him apart. See, part of the playbook the crafty council attempted to use against the prophet Nehemiah is character assassination. Likewise, this crafty council has tried to make this attempt towards me and others with how they use the label emotional. I am going to actually show you how they are deceptively using this word interchangeably with effeminate. Let's start with getting the proper understanding of emotional. How do we interpret and how we respond to the world around us makes up who we are and contributes to our quality of life. The study of emotional psychology allows researchers to dive into what makes humans react as they do to certain stimuli and how those reactions affect us both physically and mentally. While the study of emotional psychology is vast and complex, researchers have discovered quite a bit about what constitutes our emotions and our behavioral and physical reactions to them. How do we define emotions? Emotions. What does it mean to be emotional? See, emotions are confused with 
feelings and moods, but the three are not interchangeable. According to the American Psychological Association, emotion is defined as a complex reaction pattern involving experiential behavior and physiological elements. Emotional experiences have three components, a subjective experience, a physiological response, and a behavioral or expressive response. See, feelings arise from an emotional experience because a person is conscious of the experience. This is classified in the same category as hunger or pain. A feeling is the result of an emotion and may be influenced by memories, beliefs, and other factors. Emotional psychologist Paul Ekman identified six basic emotions that could be interpreted through facial expressions. They include happiness, sad, fear, anger, surprise, disgust. He expanded the list in 1999 to also include embarrassment, excitement, contempt, shame, pride, satisfaction, and amusement. I said all of this to say, we all are emotional. We all get into feelings that arise from an emotional experience every day. Whether it's the emotion of anger during traffic congestion, emotions of fear of danger when you see a police officer, or emotions of embarrassment when dealing with your teenage child that stems from certain behavioral experiences with them, I absolutely get into emotions of anger and frustration when I hear so many within our community make comments such as, I don't care about the pubes, or the church in Savannah doesn't mean anything, and yet, for the sake of gossip, makes videos about them. For the sake of gossip, makes videos about them. For the sake of gossip, makes videos about them. For the sake of gossip, makes videos about them. I don't care, for me personally, I don't care where you fall on the pews. I don't, I really don't. I have my opinions on it, but those are my opinions. What I'm looking at is the bigger picture. Why would I jump on something like that? That is going to have a built in requirement that I go to them for their assistance and their approval. I get into my emotions when I see children without a father and mother's presence get taken advantage of. I get into my emotions when I see the women taken advantage of. I get into my emotions when I see a con man like Issachar fleecing the people. Again, for some who are not aware, I am connected to that church. My family is connected to the First African Baptist Church of Savannah, Georgia. See, according to how so many many loosely use the label emotional and in his or her feelings we can truly say the messiah was very emotional after all he did call peter satan after all he did go into the temple and turn over tables and beat the money changers for what they had done we can say the messiah was very emotional when he used the phrase faithless and perverse generation we can say the messiah was in his feelings when he responded to his disciples murmuring or grumbling about his teachings and he said this to them do this in other words his teachings offend you when many of them turned their backs on him he looked over to his disciples and said to them will you also go so was the messiah emotional 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 in this clip from the video title, The Black Church Leading the Way Back to Slavery, Issachar, AKA Dwayne, gets very emotional. We see his wife addressing a question posted by someone in the chat asking the following, will you speak to your commercializing of Bantu spirituality? Are these righteous works? Don't get offended. You left a comment. I'm coming back to you to respond to it. See, people do that sometimes. It's kind of like to throw it back on you to make you think, oh, you, no, 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 I'm, not, I'm just responding to you. You just didn't know what to expect. 
You didn't know what to expect. You thought we were just going to, well, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It, <laughs> yeah, I get you. No, there's no coons up in here. Maybe in the church where you came out of, but there's no cooning up in here, period. We're not cooning up in here. You understand? We're not doing that. All right. Take that back to church. Take that back to church. Take that back to church. So let, let me let me speak to this really quickly. Um, S, D and H 99 who left a comment. Will you speak to your commercializing of Bantu spirituality? Are these righteous works? Will you speak to your commercializ commercializing of Bantu spirituality? Are these righteous works? Now, see, this is what happens when you do not know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. right? What happens is you open your mouth and you will look like a fool, look like a fool, look like a fool, look like a fool. I believe the person's question was misunderstood and taken out of context. The question was not about supporting black owned or Israelite owned businesses. It was about making a product out of the Bantu culture. It was not about having a clothing line, but the commercialization of the Bantu name. What did the Messiah say about name calling and character assassination? Let's hear how Issachar contradicts himself as he attempts to justify his inappropriate behavior. I apologize for the delays in uploading this video, but I came across a very important video of Issachar's own teaching just before I was going to premiere the spirit of Issachar. So this video will prove my point in showing the contradictions and lies of Issachar aka Dwayne and how he should never teach the holy text 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 did this individual did he actually um Reach out to you, reach out to you, reach out to you. He said, no. He said, no, he never, no, I, I never talked to him. I've listened to him for a long time, but I've never spoken to him. I was like, really? I was like, really? I was like, really? I said, wow, that's something. I said, he never called you? He was like, no. And so that to me was very unfortunate. 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 We're supposed to come together or, or come, not, when I say come together, I ain't talking about on YouTube. I'm talking about doing, maybe I'm old fashioned. I remember this thing called the, the phone with the dials on it. You call them or you, you know, reach out to them and say, hey, listen, I got some questions. Now, I will even say before this, and this is what I share with the brothers. If I have an issue with somebody, the first thing, and I don't know you, and I don't know you, and I don't know you, and I don't know you. The first thing I'm not going to do is start off the conversation with, I don't agree with you. No, you build a relationship. This is just one-on-one. -on -one. If I want to get to know you, let's say, if I wanted to get them no mega old school, I'm not going to start our initial conversation with inviting you to a debate or starting off the conversation with, I disagree with you mega old school on this, that, black, black, black. No. If I first of all, if I perceive you as a brother or sister, I'm not going to start the conversation like that. You don't do that. If I first of all, if I perceive you as a brother or sister, I'm not going to start the conversation like that. You don't do that. You get to know the person first. 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 Right? You establish some type of relationship. I'm not saying, saying you got to send them a, a, a box of cookies and some flowers or nothing like that. I'm not saying that. No, no, no. You get to know him. This is your brother. This is your brother. This is your brother. This is your brother. This is your sister. 
This is your sister. This is your sister. This is your sister. And so when you're getting to know your family, you don't ever start off the conversation like that. You get to know people. Then after that, over time, as you get to know them, the Mwanda, his Holy Spirit, will begin to shift. Maybe he would give you license or release to begin to bring certain things up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then after that, over time, as you get to know them, the Mwanda, his Holy Spirit, will begin to shift. Maybe he would give you license or release to begin to bring certain things up. You know what I'm saying? The problem that we have in Israel today, and I've seen this happen multiple times, is that instead of doing that, what we do is we take it on, on the streets of YouTube. And I have a very serious problem with that because that that's not even respected on the streets. I mean, when you trying to get gain some respect, when you, when you are trying to gain respect or establish respect, you don't even do that kind of stuff in the street. You usually go to the person first and say, hey, listen, this, this, whatever. You know what I mean? That's the first thing you do. But what I see going on in Israel is that we don't even do that. 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 As you can see, Issachar, aka Dwayne, has a history of contradicting himself. In the previous clip, from the video title, Who Do They Say I Am? You hear and see him addressing the same issue I had and others have with him. He decided to create a public video filled with deceptions driven by jealousy. I am going to show and prove to you that this person is a witch according to the biblical description and operating in witchcraft according to the holy text. See, he made every attempt to reframe or repackage my issue and others issues with him in trying to make it about the pews. Again, that's the playbook of the Crafty Council. They purposely created and uploaded several videos about the pews with me included in them and then wanted me to engage them. I chose not to engage them due to their lack of integrity. I chose to end all communications and no longer entertain fruitless discussions with them. As I have stated this before and I will say this again, everyone is entitled to have discussions about the pews. The issue I have with the actions of Dwayne is his deceptive approach starting with creating a video titled Leading Us Back Into Captivity Part 2, suggesting that Benea, Hebrew Nation, Bishop Brown, and me are leading our people back into captivity. So I I am going to stay right here and not allow him to pivot or move the discussion elsewhere. So did I call him a witch? Did I make any statements or comments stating that he is operating in witchcraft? Absolutely. I will not bite my tongue, nor will I mince or retract my words. So the question is, what is a witch? What image comes to mind when you think about a witch or a witch doctor? Is it a woman with a large bump on her nose, wearing all black, green face, riding a broom and standing over her famous crystal ball? Is it a woman that has a bone in her nose and her eyes to the back of her head gyrating? Is it a man with locks, Creole accent, and tossing chicken bones onto the ground? What is your perception of a witch? See, we have been institutionalized in how and what we think about witches. So let's get a better understanding of witches, warlocks, witch doctors, and witchcraft. To do this, let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, 
revelings and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. See, witchcraft or sorcery includes the use of drugs or of evil spirits to gain control over the lives of others or over one's own life. In the present context, it would include all forms of seeking the control of one's fate, including astrology, palm reading, seances, fortune telling, crystals, and other forms of witchcraft. Also, under the works of the flesh, we see the words variants. The Greek word is pronounced eris, which means strife, discord, contention, fighting, struggling, quarreling, dissension, and wrangling. It means that a man fights against another person in order to get something such as position, promotion, property, honor, and recognition. He deceives doing whatever has to be done in his mind to get what he is after. So again, what is the works of the flesh? What is a witch? The works of the flesh is the works of iniquity. The Greek word for iniquity is pronounced anomia, which means violation of the law, wickedness, transgression of the law. The Hebrew word for iniquity is pronounced awan, which means to crook, pervert, do perverse, do wickedly, do wrong, to bend, twist, distort. What Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 through 21 is actually saying is that a worker of iniquity is a person who perverts bend, twist, distort, and promote the violation of the law of the Most High. There are laws that govern every aspect of our lives. There is the laws of physics, the law of astronomy, the law of nature, the law of motion, the law of chemicals, the law of medicine, just to name a few. So let's confirm this with scripture. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 and 23 says, many will say to me in that day, Adonaiah, Adonaiah, or some would say Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, a worker of iniquity is someone who operates in rebellion. It is someone who resists and rebels against authority. A key weapon of a worker of iniquity is the usage of witchcraft, which is a form of rebellion. Based on the biblical descriptions of a worker of iniquity, which is synonymous to a witch, they are false teachers of the scriptures. They hide behind titles such as bishop, apostle, pastor, evangelist, and etc. They also hide behind English transliterations of Hebrew names names such as Issachar, aka Dwayne. Many of them, like Dwayne, are bending, twisting, and distorting the commandments of the Most High. We can take this a step further by stating a witch is someone who are bending, twisting, and distorting the words of the Messiah, thus teaching a completely different Messiah. The scripture gives a stern approach in handling those who are operating in the spirit of witchcraft. Now before I read the following verse that's displayed on your screen, I want to give you and others watching this video a disclaimer. I am not promoting the usage of violence on any person. I am simply using this commandment to show how serious the Most High is about the practice of witchcraft. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Issachar, aka Dwayne, made every attempt to manipulate his listeners by bending, twisting, and distorting my words. So again, I am not promoting violent acts towards anyone. Exodus chapter 22 verse 18 says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Again, 
what is a witch? Let's start with defining a witch doctor. Merriam-Webster dictionary says, a professional worker of magic, usually in a primitive society who often works to cure sicknesses. So again, a witch doctor is a professional worker of magic. The etymology dictionary definition of magic says, art of influencing, predicting events, producing marvels using hidden natural forces, sorcery, one of the members of the learned and priestly class, magic, priest. A witch doctor in Hebrew is pronounced kashap, which is a priest who specializes in the art of influence and manipulation. We see this behavior on full display by Issachar. So what is the difference between a witch doctor and a witch? The etymology dictionary definition of the word witch says, female magician, sorceress, having dealings with the devil or evil spirits, sorcerer, wizard, man who practices witchcraft or magic. Let me read that again. Man who practices witchcraft or magic. Let me say it one more time for the people in the back. Man who practices witchcraft witchcraft or magic. Let me say it in slow motion. Man who practices witchcraft or magic for the people in the back. So a man can be a witch. It goes on to say divination, necromancer, in other words, one who wakes the dead. And so a witch doctor is a professional worker of magic, which is synonymous to witchcraft. The etymology dictionary definition of witchcraft says this, magic, power, skill. I really want to hone in on the Greek word and definition of witchcraft. The Greek word is pronounced pharmakia. It means medication. Medication, in other words, pharmacy, magic, sorcery. So remember, witchcraft or sorcery includes the use of drugs or of evil spirits to gain control over the lives of others or over one's own life. In the present context, it would include all forms of seeking the control of one's fate, including astrology, palm reading, seances, fortune telling, crystals, and other forms of witchcraft. Now that we have established the biblical definition of a witch, now let me show you how Issachar, aka Dwayne, continues to operate in witchcraft right before your eyes. Before I do so, I want to define the word charm. The etymology dictionary definition of charm says incantation, magic charm, magic spell, incantation, song. This word comes from the word canary, which means to sing. The verb definition of this word means to recite or cast a magic spell, to enchant, to fill someone with desire. Unfortunately, so many of our brothers and sisters have allowed their anger towards Christianity allow predators to subject them to charms and have them behaving as a canary under the spirit of ventriloquy as they regurgitate the spells of these witches. These witches can reel you in by simply saying things like stop giving tithes, get rid of the offering plate, Christian Israelites, or in reverse say things about Hebrew Israelites with the goal of reeling you in while at the same time these these witches are nickeling and diming you with merchandise such as books, videos, conferences, and other items. Other items. Other items. Other items. And let me kind of give you more picture on this and why this is unfortunate. And we're going to get into some scriptures here, okay? I'm going to show you some things and, and, and why are certain things are just foundational and it's important. Um, when you have an issue with somebody, and of course, you know, in scripture, it's very clear on this. If you got an art, if you got something against your brother, what do you do? You go to them directly. That's what you do. And I didn't see that according to what I know. You know, I got some questions. Now, I will even say before this, and this is what I share with the brothers. If I have an issue with somebody, the first thing, and I don't know you. 
the first thing I'm not going to do is start off the conversation with, I don't agree with you. No. If I, first of all, if I perceive you as a brother or sister, I'm not going to start the conversation like that. You don't do that. You get to know the person first, right? You establish some type of relationship. I'm not saying, saying you got to send them a, a, a box of cookies and some flowers or nothing like that. I'm not saying that. No, no, no. You get to know them. This is your brother. This is your sister. The problem that we have in Israel today, and I've seen this happen multiple times, is that instead of doing that, what we do is we take it on, on the streets of YouTube. And I have a very serious problem with that because that that's not even respected on the streets. So let's go to the scripture. It says that whosoever is angry with your brother. I wasn't angry. I had no e reason to be angry. If I was angry, that means now it's a personal attack. And I was not doing a personal attack. And so I had no reason to be angry at all. So I was not angry. So this passage clearly does, does not apply at all. You know, but people do take this and say, if you have a disagreement with your brother, you're so, and then they skip down that you're supposed, you know, and then they, in our b Christianized brain, you say, well, you're supposed to go to the people. You're supposed to go to the person. Doesn't say that in scripture. Okay, so that doesn't apply here. And eh. now let me give you proper clarity to the text Issachar deceptively and purposely taught with the goal of justifying his poor behavior. Matthew chapter 5 verse 21 through 24 says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. 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 Don't get offended. You left a comment. I'm coming back to you to respond to it. See, people do that sometimes. It's kind of like to throw it back on you to make you think, oh, you no, no, no. I'm not, I'm just responding to you. You just didn't know what to expect. You didn't know what to expect. You thought we were just going to, well, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It, <laughs> yeah, I get you. No, there's no coons up in here. Maybe in the church where you came out of, but there's no cooning up in here, period. We're not cooning up in here. You understand? Yeah. We're not doing that. All right. Take that back to church. Take that back to church. So let, let me let me speak to this really quickly. Um, S D and H 99 who left a comment. Will you speak to your commercializing of Bantu spirituality? Are these righteous works? Will you speak to your commercial commercializing of Bantu spirituality? Are these righteous works? Now, see, this is what happens when you do not know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. right? What happens is you open your mouth and you will look like a fool, look like a fool, look like a fool, look like a fool. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother has aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. See, the sixth commandment of the covenant is, Thou shalt not kill.
kill. This command is a commandment that addresses anger. What the Messiah is actually saying as he teach his disciples is how man truly don't understand and misread this law. He's addressing how man selectively interpret this law and others to say what they want it to say as we see with the example of Issachar. In this case, the Messiah is not only addressing physically and in this case, the Messiah is not only addressing physically taking the life of an innocent man, but the assassination of another man's character. Taking the life of an innocent man or taking the life of an innocent person is an inward act of anger, bitterness, and enmity. Murder is born from within, from an uncontrolled spirit, from an unregulated urge. I want to read the same text from the Aramaic translation, the Peshitta. It says, But I say unto you that whosoever becomes angry with his brother for no reason is guilty before the court. And whoever should say to his brother, Raka, which means I spit on you, is guilty before the congregation. And whoever says to his brother, you are infeminate, in other words, in Aramaic, brutish, abnormal, is condemned to hellfire. If it should happen, therefore, while you are presenting your offering upon the altar and right there, you remember that your brother has any grievance against you, leave your offering there upon the altar and first go and make peace with your brother and then come back and present your offering. The Greek definition of anger says to provoke or enrage, become exasperated, be angry. The key to understanding the Greek word or gizzo is understanding the key word provoke. The etymology dictionary definition of provoke says to induce, to stimulate, call forth, challenge. It also means to speak and again urge, incite, stimulate to action. Provoke as we see simply means urge, incite, stimulate, in other words appetite, into action, challenge. As you see the word anger does not mean what Issachar aka Duane deceptively taught as he made an attempt to bend, twist, and distort the words of the Messiah. As you see anger is not expressed as a facial expression, nor is it expressed in relations to the volume of your voice. The simple translation of this verse reads that whosoever feels urge or have an appetite or challenge that leads into action to destroy his brother's character without a cause. Now let's address a key quote from verse 23. It says, And there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee. The Greek definition of the word ought says, and it's pronounced tis. It means a kind of, any, in other words, man, anything, anything at all. One. Now let's go to the Oxford Dictionary and get a better understanding of the word ought. It says, used to indicate duty or correctness. Typically, when criticizing someone's actions, simply put, art simply means the need to correct someone's actions. So the simple translation of this verse would read, you know your brother have a problem with the words you've expressed publicly in an attempt to assassinate his character. Go make it right with him. I want to go back to the Peshitta's translation of verse 22. It says, But I say to you that whoever becomes angry with his brother for no reason is guilty before the court. And whoever should say to his brother, Raka, which means I spit on you, is guilty before the congregation. And whoever says to his brother, You are infeminate. In Aramaic, it means brutish, abnormal, is condemned to hell fire. See, effeminate means to have feminine tendencies if you do the etymology of the word. This is the word or suggestion many of the most highest people use in attempt to assassinate someone's character. They would use the words or phrases such as he's in his feelings or he's emotional. Also, 
using terms like Christian Israelite or Israelite Christian is now used in a way among this community to destroy the character of others. We have a pastor who could not take someone simply disagreeing. It's, it's, it wasn't about the facts. It wasn't about the evidence. It was simply about disagreement. And because of the disagreement, again, we're going to just chronicle a little bit of what I saw. His first reaction was to basically to immediately take to social media, which is fine. It's totally fine. But I've noticed a pattern with this individual. Anytime someone says something that, uh, that if they disagree with him, he has a tendency of always running to him. Now it's time for me to go geek mode. Issachar, AKA Dwayne, made a very deceptive attempt to do what's called psychoanalysis on me, which he failed miserably. Now let's do a psychoanalysis on him using his own words. Issachar says, we have a pastor who could not take someone simply disagreeing with him. Now here is my response to the tasteless video he did on a Thursday night this is the clip from a discussion I had with Sister E and Benaya Israel on her channel the following night. One thing I don't do is make a conscious effort to go public on someone and just do exactly what was just done. Mm -hmm. I've never said, hey, you lead not people back to this place, not that place. And this is there's a number of things that are out there that I just don't agree with. But guess what? I'm not public about it, you know, because it's one of those things that, hey, you know, I'm not trying to uh, embarrass anyone. If I have a discussion with that person offline, I'll do that. But I'm, I'm not going to just bring someone name up and then just make a video. And that's a, you know, that's a, we're not just talking about like, hey, I don't agree with Pastor Kelly taught about, let's just say Hebrew, you know what I mean? It's, it's a big difference as to saying, you're leading our people back to captivity. 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 I made it clear that my issue with Issachar, AKA Dwayne, is him stating that I and others are leading our people back into captivity. He goes on to say, it wasn't about the facts. It wasn't about the evidence. It was simply about disagreement. And because of the disagreement, his first reaction was to immediately take to social media, which is fine. In this loaded statement and tone of voice, he is now trying to play the victim. This shows that he is a narcissist and is displaying narcissistic behavior. He starts his video with slapping me and others and the face with the leading our people back to captivity and then out of the same breath asks the question what's wrong? Notice each time he supposedly summarizes the timeline of events with his viewers he never gives the title of the video. He goes on to say, but I've noticed a pattern with this individual. He says that he's been watching me, which led him to this baseless conclusion. This behavior is similar to what is called delusional jealousy. See, delusional jealousy is a false belief that a spouse or partner is unfaithful. The individual is constantly on the watch for indications that this belief is justified, manufactures evidence if it is not to be found, and completely disregards facts that contravene the conviction, also called morbid jealousy, Othello syndrome or delusion, pathological jealousy, 
See, it's clear. Issachar's behavior is rooted in jealousy. His jealousy stems from not being included in the Reclaiming the Throne project produced by Hebrew Nation. This is why he chose to manufacture evidence because he has none. This is why he is filled with contradictions. I prove and will give additional examples of how he should not be allowed to teach anyone. He then continues with a generic feast or famine statement. Anytime that someone says something, they disagree with him. He has a tendency to always running to women. My challenge to you, Issachar, a.k.a. Dwayne, prove it. Give examples. Tell the people about these supposed situations. You can't. Why? Because you don't have any. This is why you made it clear that you will not have any discussions, which means that you are not just suffering from delusional jealousy, but you suffer from pathological lying. Pathological lying is a persistent compulsive tendency to tell lies out of proportion to any apparent advantage that can be achieved. This often occurs among people with alcoholic dependency or brain damage, but it is most common among individuals with antisocial personality disorder who in some cases do not seem to understand the nature of a falsehood. See, the outward signs of Issachar aka Dwayne are his body language. Pay attention to his shifty eyes. Pay attention to the tone of his voice and his body language such as sweating. Pay attention to his shifty eyes in this video. You will notice he does this throughout this video and others. So let's go to the scripture it says that whosoever is angry with your brother. I wasn't angry. I had no e reason to be angry. If I was angry, that means now it's a personal attack. And I was not doing a personal attack. And so I had no reason to be angry at all. So I was not angry. So this passage clearly does, does not apply at all. You know, but people do take this and say, if you have a disagreement with your brother, you're so, and then they skip down that you're supposed, you know, and then they, in our b Christianized brain, we said, well, you're supposed to go to the people. You're supposed to go to the person. It doesn't say that in scripture. Okay, so that doesn't apply here. And we have a pastor who could not take someone simply disagreeing. It's it's it wasn't about the facts. It wasn't about the evidence. It was simply about disagreement. And because of the disagreement, again, we're gonna just chronicle a little bit of what I saw. His first reaction was to basically to immediately take to social media, which is fine. It's totally fine. But I've noticed a pattern with this individual. Anytime someone says something that, uh, that if they disagree with him, he has a tendency of always running to them. Issachar, aka Dwayne, is literally a piece of work. He is very predictable and took the bait which in turn confirmed my assessment of him. I know some of you are asking the following questions. How did I come to my conclusions about Issachar? How and what did I use as a baseline? This is the video I used to establish a baseline. Don't get offended. You left a comment. I'm coming back to you to respond to it. See, people do that sometimes. It's kind of like to throw it back on you to make you think, oh, you no, no, no. I'm not, I'm just responding to you. You just didn't know what to expect. You didn't know what to expect. You thought we were just going, well, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> yeah, I get you. No, there's no coons up in here. Maybe in the church where you came out of, but there's no cooning up in here, period. We're not cooning up in here. You understand? Yeah. We're not doing that. All right, take that back to church. Take that back to church. So, let, let me let me speak to this really quickly. 
um, S D and H 99 who left a comment. Will you speak to your commercializing of Bantu spirituality? Are these righteous works? Will you speak to your commercialized commercializing of Bantu spirituality? Are these righteous works? Now see, this is what happens when you do not know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Right? What happens is you open your mouth and you will look like a fool. Look like a fool. Look like a fool. Look like a fool. Notice how, according to Issachar's poor understanding of human emotions, he is very emotional. In this clip, he is making direct eye contact with the camera. His body language and gestures are consistent up until monies is discussed. At that point, he defaults to his wife as she engages the person in the chat. What's funny is how I gave the playbook two weeks ago about his behavior in a live I did titled Witches Among Us. You see the manipulation? <laughs> you see the witchcraft? Family, if, if I could enlarge his facial expression, look at his eyes. See, you know when a person is lying and know that they cannot tell, they're not telling the truth, that they are not accurate. Their eyes all, they go all over the place. <laughs> his eyes is all over the place. His body language is all over the place. He knows what he's done is wrong and he knows he's lying. But let me play it one more time, family. I'm gonna give you some 101 uh, front row seat, some 101 on how to pay attention to body language and tell whether or not if a person is lying. See, that's why I want to show my face and look at you directly into the camera so that way you can see my body language. You can see this, you can see my eyes. You can see how, you know, that I'm not all of this and all of that and looking all around. I'm looking at you directly into the camera. But look at how he's all over the place. Resist Hasatan, he will flee. Let me show you again. I'm, I'm going to show you one-on-one how to recognize witches, how to recognize the spirit of witchcraft, how to recognize liars. How to recognize that. That's why the Most High has made it clear he cannot stand a liar. A thief and a liar. Because guess what? They would do anything to bend and twist his law, statutes, and commandments to justify what they do. So let me play the video one more time. So let's go to the scripture. It says that whosoever is angry with your brother. I wasn't angry. I had no reason to be angry. If I was angry, that means now it's a personal attack. And I was not doing a personal attack. And so I had no reason to be angry at all. So I was not angry. So this passage clearly does does not apply at all. You know, but people do take this and say, if you have a disagreement with your brother, you're so and then they skip down that you're supposed, you know, and then they in our b Christianized brain, we say, Well, you're supposed to go to the people. You're supposed to go to the person. It doesn't say that in scripture. Okay, so that doesn't apply here. And Even after he watched that video, you can clearly see how he made an assertive effort to change or mask his behavioral patterns. But he could not get away from these signs. He could not stop sweating profusely as he continued pushing his lies about me. The Holy Spirit is no joke. 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 And I'm only sweating because it's hot in his room. And I'm only sweating because it's hot in his room. And I'm only sweating because it's hot in his room. And I'm only sweating because it's hot in his room. It's quite apparent that Issachar, AKA Dwayne, is overcompensating for something. He is constantly pointing fingers at everyone to cover up and deflect the attention from the log in his eye. I will reveal that log at the end of this presentation. See, in psychology, this behavior is called 
compensation. See, compensation is the substitution or development of strength or capability in one area to offset real or imagined deficiency in another. This may be referred to as overcompensation. See, when the substitute behavior exceeds what might actually be necessary in terms of level of compensation for the deficiency, compensation may be a conscious or unconscious process. In his classical psychoanalytic theory, Sigmund Freud describes compensation as a defense mechanism that protects the individual against the conscious realization of such deficiencies. See, the idea of compensation is central to Alfred Adler's theory of personality, which sees all human striving as a response to feelings of inferiority, which leads me to what is called inferiority complex. Inferiority complex is a basic feeling of inadequacy and security deriving from actual or imagined physical or psychological deficiency that may result in behavioral expressions ranging from the withdrawal of immobilizing timidity to the overcompensation of excessive competition and aggression. Lastly, passive aggressive personality disorder, which I call nice nasty. So what is passive aggressive personality disorder? Passive aggressive personality disorder, PAPD, causes people to express negative feelings and emotions subtly or passively rather than directly. This often creates a contradiction between what they say and do. Again, as I proved, Issachar aka Dwayne's words are filled with contradiction. See, according to the American Psychological Association, passive aggressive personality disorder is a personality disorder of long standing in which ambivalence toward the self and others is expressed by passive expressions of underlying negativism. This means that passive aggressive personality disorder is a chronic, generally inflexible condition in the American Psychological Association definition. The term ambivalence means that a person has contradictory feelings or attitudes towards themselves or a situation, event, or person. In summary, Issachar, aka Dwayne, suffers from disillusional jealousy, pathological lying, overcompensating, inferiority complex, and passive aggressiveness, which in other words simply means nice nasty. Simply means nice nasty. Simply means nice nasty. Simply means nice nasty. So I've noticed this. I noticed this because this same pastor had the same issue with Pastor Dow. He had the same issue with uh, some of the people within the, what is it, the, oh, what is it? Apologetic, urban apologetic movement. Urban apologetic movement. Urban apologetic movement. Okay. And there are people, you know, these are Christians that, you know, that, you know, when they, they see the Bible differently and all that. And, you know, they, they're going to believe what they believe believe what they believe believe what they believe believe what they believe in this particular situation we have a pastor who could not take someone simply disagreeing it's it's it wasn't about the facts it wasn't about the evidence it was simply about disagreement and because of the disagreement again we're going to just chronicle a little bit of what i saw his first reaction was to basically to immediately take to social media, which is fine. It's totally fine. But I've noticed a pattern with this individual. Anytime someone says something that, uh, that, that they disagree with him, he has a tendency of always running to women. I don't understand that. Well, I do understand. That. Thank you. And I'm only sweating because it's hot in this room. Ain't, I'm not nervous. Okay, so, you know, anybody wants to do that, and it's not that. So, he also, I've noticed this. I noticed this because this same pastor had the same issue with Pastor Dow. He had the same issue with uh, some of the people within the, what is it, the, oh, what is it? 
apologetic, urban apologetic movement. Okay. And there are people, you know, these are Christians that, you know, that, you know, when they, they see the Bible differently and all that, and, you know, they, they're going to believe what they believe and it, and it's totally fine. I mean, I don't have nothing to do with them and, you know. Now let's put what we have learned earlier about how to detect a liar into practice. Now I am going to play the previous clip again and you be the judge. Do you really think Issachar, AKA Dwayne, never heard of the UA community? Do you really believe Issachar, AKA Dwayne, do not have or have made any contact with them. Do you really believe Issachar, AKA Dwayne, is telling the truth? Let's see if Issachar, AKA Dwayne, can pass the lie detector test. Remember what to look out for, such as wandering or shifty eyes, the Popeye or the pirate with one eye open look, and other facial expressions. Pay attention to his body language and the tone of his voice, especially when he says, I don't have nothing to do with them as he refers to the UA community, as he attempts to explain his poor observations and his deceptive behaviors. As you watch the clip again, type fail in the chat if you truly believe he failed or if you truly believe he passed, type passed in the chat or in the comment section. What is the spirit of Issachar, AKA Dwayne? Why is it important to know? There is so much to unwrap about the behavior of this person. See, to answer this question, I want to start with Genesis chapter 49, verse one. It says, and Jacob called unto his sons and said, gather, asop yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. See, the Hebrew word asap transliterates to the English word gather. Asap means to come together for the purpose to receive. Genesis 49 verse 2 says, Gather, kwabataza, yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken, Shammai, unto Israel your father. In verse 2, we see another Hebrew word that transliterates to the English word gather. That that Hebrew word is kwabatz or kwabataza. The Hebrew definition of kwabataza says to grasp, collect, assemble, assemble selves, gather, gather, bring, gather together, gather selves together, gather up. Simply put, kwabataza means to bring together and listen. See, the Hebrew word that transliterates to the word listen is shamai. It also means to hear intelligently, consider, discern, give ear, obedient, be obedient, obey, understand. Jacob called his sons to come together and listen to him with intelligence. Jacob, now known as Israel and in ancient Hebrew, Yashara'al, was very ill and approaching death. He called all his sons to gather around his bed together and listen to his words without strife among them. When it was time for him to offer his last blessings, he called all of his sons to gather closely around him. The Most High enabled Jacob to predict the future of the nation of Israel. So why did Yahweh want the future of Israel predicted here? See, the Most High did this to encourage Jacob because he was dying and truly trusted in his promises. Also to warn Jacob's sons and descendants of the strengths and weaknesses and also the traits and their nature. He wanted to show his people of all 
all generations that we reap what we sow. Here's the strengths and weaknesses of a couple of Jacob's sons, starting with Reuben. Genesis chapter 49 verse 3 says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. We just highlighted the strengths of Reuben and now let's review his weaknesses. Genesis chapter 49 verse 4 gives the weaknesses of Jacob's firstborn son Reuben. It says, unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defiledest thou it. He went up to my couch. Jacob said, Reuben is unstable. The Hebrew word that transliterates to the English word unstable is pakat. This word means to bubble up, froth, as in boiling water, recklessness, wantonness. Reuben was reckless and very flirtatious. He had unbridled license, in other words, no self-control over his sexual impulses to the point that he had an inappropriate relationship with his father's wife, his brother's own mother. The next son I want to touch on is Issachar. Genesis chapter 49 verse 14 gives the strength of Issachar. It says, Issachar is a strong donkey crouching down between two burdens. The strength of Issachar is that of a strong donkey, an animal of great strength. I want you to understand that the donkey was of great value in ancient history. See, the donkey was a major animal used to transport the goods of that day and time. And so the idea is that Issachar and his descendants was to be a strong and sturdy tribe of people. Issachar also had a weakness. Genesis chapter 49 verse 15 says, And he saw that the rest was good, and that the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Issachar's weakness was lethargy and complacency. There was the danger that the tribe's primary objective in life would become comfort, ease, rest, and of course, prosperity. Jacob predicted Issachar's descendants would become so comfortable and satisfied that they would be more willing to be enslaved than to risk the comforts of life. So is it a coincidence that Dwayne chose the name Issachar? I am going to show you how Issachar is actually leading some of our people into Catholicism, into demonic worship. I'm going to show you why he downplayed the Catholic image of Fatima. I'm going to show you how Issachar misled so many people with his poor understanding of the Bantu. One last point I want to make. I want to explain the reason why I selected Stymie from the Little Rascal. This name best describes Issachar. The etymology of the word stymie says, condition in which an opponent's ball blocks the hole. Person who sees poorly, block, hinder, thwart. See Issachar, he is an individual who enjoys making every attempt to block and hinder his own people. 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 His own people.